To some people, to some people may say that, hey, Bao's a fucking nice guy. You know, that's a real, but you know what? It makes me feel good. So by feeling good, that's my payment. You know, I wouldn't give it to a stranger on the street. Say, fuck you, Bao, give me some money. Because I don't get anything back. I don't get that feeling of gratitude, appreciation. So, you know, everybody does something for a reason. And this is how I teach all my friends how you can tell if someone's a scammer or not. You have to figure out what they want, okay? What do they want? Like, I am coming to Instagram Live today. I am going to educate you for free how to trade stocks as best as I can in the hour limited I do, right? What do I gain from it? I feel fucking great. I feel fucking good. You know, that's what I gain from it. But if I, I don't gain that kind of thing, then you should be weary. You should be, a, you should be like, why is he doing this? What the fuck does he want from me? Obviously, if you, I'm going to train you and you see value, you join MIC. So there is something. So, you know, if you do not know what the other person wants, that's when you get scammed. So, there's a lot of scammers lately using my fake name, Alex's fake name, Tosh now, everybody's fake name. And so when they're messaging you, hey, how are you doing? How's your trading going? You wanna invest in my thing? You should go, but bing, 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 bing. Does this sound like bow? No. Be smart, guys. What does that guy want? That guy wants money. That guy's want money, okay? And so that should trigger in your head that this is a scammer, you know? <laughs> so be smart, guys. Figure out what they really want. They're not there to help you if they're asking for money lately. But you know what, man? There are true people out there that really want to help other people. Uh, but they gain, they gain what they gain is appreciation. They help their friends, and their friends are appreciative. Okay, so everybody has something to gain, guys. Um, and to be honest, this is, uh, I'm going to leave it one last thing before we start. Um, how, when you get into business with someone or whatever, whatever it may be, a, really, a rule of thumb is uh, they have to have the same or more to lose than you, then you should not worry. If you have nothing to lose, that's when the YOLO, that's when you get killed. When you partner with someone or when you become friends with someone who has nothing to lose, those are the friends that usually get you in trouble. But if you have a job, you have a family, you have a lot to lose. If you have kids, you have a lot to lose. Those are the friends that, you know, they can get crazy, but they still have a responsibility. They got to get to their family, their friends, their kids, whatever it may be. But if you're just living for yourself and you're broke, nothing to lose, that's when it's very dangerous. So, you know, you can still be friends with those people, but just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that that's how you can tell someone's after you or not because they're more likely i'm more scared i am more scared that you're gonna join msc and cause me trouble and that's why <laughs> you see me trying to tell people not to join msc if you're an asshole i would rather you not join msc i have a lot more to lose than you so with that said you should know who's a scammer or not why the hell would i randomly <laughs> dm you asking for money Right? I mean, that's just dumb ass shit. I have a lot to lose and to fucking try to scam you out of a dollar, right? So, anyways, guys. Okay, getting back to the thing. Alex goes, get back. So, what we're going to do is this, Alex. Uh, the reason I talk this because I'm waiting for people to join. People, everyone's, everyone's late. So, I like to talk a little thing before we start. So, Alex is going to come at the end. He's going to have a lot of cool things to talk about. I'm going to bring Alex on the end. So, you guys should wait. You guys should wait and uh, for Alex to come on, okay? And what I want to talk about today, guys, is summer is coming up. It is summer actually, right? Is it spring? Almost summer. Trading has been very difficult for some, for some styles. I see Twitter guys blowing the fuck up. I'm trying to help some Twitter guys and they refuse my help. You know, ego doesn't mean anything to each their own guys. I mean, I'm, you only help so many people, right guys? So focus on the people you want to help. I help them because you know what? I feel bad sometimes. I feel bad. And you know why I help certain people? I help certain people is because they are other people are watching them and other people are doing the same bullshit that they're doing so you imagine you have a famous celebrity who does not know how to trade stocks but he's advising people how to trade stocks what the fuck so i'm not there necessarily to help the famous individual celebrity 
I don't want them to pass around false information and hurt the little guys. So sometimes you have to stop in and help the people because those people don't need really help because they have money, whatever it may be. But their people, they're falling, may have a problem. And sometimes I get hated for that. But you know what, man? If, if you do nothing, but anyways, get back, get, get back to this. I forgot what we we're talking about, but same thing with trading, guys. We we make money, and I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to jinx myself, but dude, I've, I I walk in expecting to make money, and we do make money, guys. That's because we are not greedy. We have a process that's based around decades of my trading, and it works. We have members, and the the thing is, it's not flashy. We're not posting hundred thousand dollar P and Ls every day, but we're also not posting five hundred thousand dollar losses every day. Every day, I'm chipping around, chipping around, making. Making a million dollars a day is four thousand dollars a day. You know, so you think about that. Million dollars is a lot of fucking money, guys. You know, but when someone makes five thousand a day, four thousand a day, three thousand, seven thousand, two thousand, five thousand, four thousand, five thousand, it's not very attractive. It's not very sexy. But when you look at the end of the year, dude, that's a million dollars a year. Low risk. That anybody, anybody, if they're disciplined, to f- even making two hundred dollars a day. Is fifty thousand a year? That's life changing money for most. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is, is this: it's fun looking at a train wreck. It's fun looking at guys swinging up and down hundred thousand dollars each day. But how is that going to help your life? That is only going to fuck up your life. So stop following them. Thousand dollars. You be looking at guys making hundred thousand dollars and think it's nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you're falling. Guys are fucking losing all their money, and so soon. You'll be losing all your money. So, how do you make money during the summer, guys? The same way I make money. During- I make money every day. You stick to the process. And MIC has gone so, I guess. So, Alex gave me a big compliment today. I love it. He goes, "Bow, you you reached a new level of trading." And it's not about the P and L. It's about the process. So, I've been trying to figure out a lot of a lot of the training I do, guys. Of course, I make money, but more importantly, I want to create a. A process around it so that I can teach my members, right? Teach new process, and this is why members are not blowing up. You see every other community crying, manipulation, algos, blah 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 blah. I'm like, what the fuck are you crying about? It's the fucking same shit. When you make money, you don't fucking cry. But when they lose money, they cry. You never see me cry. If I lose, I man up. I I, I tell why I lost. When I win, I'm the same attitude. I win every. I would say. I'm gonna say I win a lot. Knock on wood. Let me bragging about it. You don't see me saying I'm the best. I post my charts and I educate. And but the thing is this: so I've been working on how to identify. I may potentially make members go broke. And a lot of the times, it's a trap. I told the guys I S E E today. It's a D short down, and sure enough, it zombied up. Okay. I told the members why O S A T is not not a long, even though it says it's a low flow. Okay, or saving money by not blowing up from the short side, as well as the long side. You probably have rooms pumping O S A T. It's a super nano float. It says there's like less than a million shares float, and you're like, what the fuck? How could it not go down? But it did go down, and I posted my chart, and I made a lot of money off it. And by doing that, I told the guys this is not a long, because we have identified. I've identified. I mean, it's, it's never perfect, of course, but maybe it's eighty percent, ninety percent. That's still pretty damn good. Wait, what's, who's this guy? I'm not gonna give a secret. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, what? What's this? Who's this? Should I ban this guy? This Danny or you know, I just heard him curse at someone. Who's this guy? I'm gonna block him. Danny or Brina? He said F word. I am actually fuck this. Let me go. I'm better. <laughs> bring him on. I'm gonna give him a chance before I block him to bring him on. But anyways, but we have identified a proprietary process that will help both the long side and the short side not blow up. And that's why when you see M I R N run, you see other rooms cry, cry manipulation, blah blah blah. You don't see us fucking crying and blowing up. Knock on wood. That's because we identify certain plays, certain certain trigger mechanisms that you should either avoid or take advantage of the other side. 
am I right, right now is in a void. It's just no man's land. It's a risk for both long and a risk for short. There is no reason to be trading that stock because you have no edge. Shorts have been killed. Longs, the moment they step in, could get killed because it's up from like two dollars. <sighs> Yep, he disappeared, so I'm going to block him. Danny, or brother. He says, unable to join. I, you know I, I Before, I, I'm going to bring trolls on. If you're a troll, I'll bring you on. Because we are very legit. I want to give you the opportunity. Because sometimes there's a misunderstanding. You know, they, they joined uh, the, this feed for a reason. They are looking for help. But they don't know how to ask for help. And so maybe a new alternative is, you know what, man? I'm going to help these guys. Because they're crying for help, and they don't know how, how to cry. Sometimes someone's so desperate that they, they just act out like a little kid, right? So it's okay. Uh, anyway, so what I want to talk about is the summer trading. Summer trading is very difficult in the sense of not because the plays or anything. It's just the volume. The volume dies down, and you see people, top traders, complaining. Blah, blah, blah. Volume, blah, blah. Li not liquid. No shit. If trading was easy, everybody would be rich, guys. If trading was easy, everybody would be rich. Stop fucking crying. Have you never traded one year before? Don't you know cycles of the market? So people that are crying, I, I, I'm like, dude, are you not a real leader? I don't want to name, I'm, I'm not saying this is in general. Because when you cry, how do you think your members feel? How do you think other feel, people feel? They are following their leader. And gurus are blowing up. Because they're not a real guru. They are a guru. Okay, stop fucking crying, dude. Markets change, adapt. Not everybody fucking has, you know, the, not, you can't just trade the same way all the fucking time. The algos figure it out. So summer, summer comes, it's slow. Size the fuck down, dummy. Size the fuck down. Use the range. You cannot go in fucking thousand, hundred thousand shares to make 10 cents anymore. Fuck that. I go in fucking, go in at 2,000 shares and make fucking a dollar, 50 cents. So, the secret to training the summer market is this. Size the fuck down. The range is your friend. Trade the range with small size. Because what's going to happen is small, uh, smaller volume, lower volume equals lower liquidity. The lower the liquidity, okay, the more that the algos can manipulate. Algos manipulate every day. Stop crying about algos. Fuck, there's algos everywhere, dude. <laughs> Amazon has an algo. Pricing is an algo. Everything's an algo. The price for your fucking Nike Jordans, Jordan Airs, whatever is an algo. So, size down. The key, the key, not that only, is risk management. I, when I discovered the fact that, so I'll tell you a quick story. I was a very consistent trader. When I started, very consistent. I was fucking good. I was nailing every fucking shit. The problem was I make money every day for 30 days and then blow up everything in one trade. I did that over and over. I'm like, I couldn't fucking figure it out because I was like, oh, it's bad luck, dude. It's a black swan. This never fucking happened. You know, I'm, I'm the fucking best. This, you know, this is a one-off shit. But that one-off shit is the reason why I never got over that hurdle when I was starting out. That's when I realized, fuck, bro. Becoming a consistent trader is not enough. I want to be a profitable trader. I'd rather be an inconsistent trader but a profitable trader, right? At the end of the day, I want to make money. I, I'd rather lose 30 times in a row but very small and then make one giant-ass win to cover it all back. That's when I realized that profitability and consistency is not a 100% correlation. You can be a consistent trader, making money every day for weeks, but unprofitable because that one outlier, that one trade always blows you the fuck up. And I see it all over fucking Twitter. I'm just like, bro, bro, listen to me. I keep trying to help these guys. I've been there. These guys think they know what the fuck they're doing. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They, they, they think that they're consistent but they always lose on the risk management. So we have a proprietary new thing in, in risk management. We already told, we already told the world the, the, the basic ones. The basic ones are max, are hard stops. People are not using hard stops. We're the first ones to advocate 
hard stops. Alex uses hard stops. You know, the days that Alex loses big, he could lose bigger without hard stops. The days that I, I even be an old dinosaur starting to use hard stops. And then we talked about max daily loss at the broker level. We were the first ones, once again, to talk about that. That is your safety net. When you fucking jump out of an airplane, you usually have what? Two parachutes. Okay? So, what the two parachutes in trading are. The first parachute is your hard stop. The second parachute is your max daily loss. Okay? Because you know what, man? We need a parachute to save us. You have the seatbelt. Not only do you have a seatbelt, you have an airbag. You have a fucking bumper. The car has many forms of risk management. It's not just a seatbelt. It's not just an airbag. It's a bumper. And you know what's in the back of the bumper? A giant ass engine. And that's why a front, uh, front wheel drive car is safer for you. Because the engine block is in the front of the car. And that is absorbing all of the energy from the crash. So keep that in mind, guys. There's a reason why. People, you know, like the exotic cars and stuff, they have the, the rear drive and the trunk in the front, you're going to fucking die. Unless that fucking frame is reinforced big time, you will die. So, the same thing with trading. Okay? You need to have all these locks in place because, you know what, man? Max City loss is not enough if, if you trigger them all the time. That's why you have hard stops. I see these guys, either they make their target or they have a max loss. No in between. What kind of fucking fucked up trading is that? If you see someone like that, let's follow them. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're gambling. If, they, if, if, your whole, if the only uh, scenarios that, that come from their trading is either reaches their goal or max loss, that is a gambler. It's like me going to the casino and saying, I'm either going to win 10000 or go home broke. What the fuck? What kind of strategy is that? I'm either going to go win 10000 or go broke. There's no in between, guys. That is a shit way to trade. You need to be actively figuring out your risk. And I'm going to show you another trick. The broker side max daily loss could be, can be put on per ticker, not just your whole account. So there's another level of risk management for you guys. Before you blow up your max daily loss on your whole account, stop out on that one ticker that fucked you. Because you'd still be trading three tickers. Three tickers. One will fuck you up. Two will make your money back. But unless you stop that one ticker from blowing your entire account, those two other ones is meaningless. So check that out, guys. Max daily loss on a ticker level. So let's say your max daily loss of your account is $1,000. You can say, I only want to lose maximum $500 per ticker because I still have a $500 back to make back my money. Okay, you don't want that one ticker to blow up your entire fucking account while you're trading multiple accounts. So that's something you don't know. <laughs> Another thing people don't know is even if you have a max daily loss, that max daily loss can balloon to 500 times and kill your entire account. Let's say you have a, a $30,000 account. Your max daily loss is 10000 Doesn't mean that you will stop on $10,000 loss, guys. <laughs> you can hold that shit, which I've done before, to a $30,000 loss because is not auto liquidated. You're like, okay, I'm, I just can't add it to a losing position. But it doesn't mean that it, 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 I lose $10,000. So what you need to do is this. You need to, if your max day loss is $1,000, put that shit at 700, 30% lower. Because by the time that you manually, manually close your position, you're down another 30 to 50%. Better yet, auto-liquidate. Max daily loss where the broker auto-liquidates. So if you set a $1,000 max loss at $1,000, they will auto-liquidate your account, your position. And you know there's slippage. So $1,000 loss, they may get out at $1,300 loss or $1,500 loss. So keep that in mind. If you want to lose a maximum of $1,000, you need to set your max daily loss lower. Okay? Lower. Because by the time you get out, it is way above that max daily loss. 
risk management is the reason, the reason, the main fucking reason I am still here today. You don't see me crying, whatever. What's the worst I can do? So there's another type of, of uh, risk management. I have millions of dollars, but I only put in 35000 into my covert trading account. With that 35000 you see me making 4000 6000 7000 dollars a day. When I reach a certain amount, I wire it out. This weekend, I wire again. I just wired another account today. <laughs> so when it reaches a certain amount, I pull back. You know yourself. There's a certain dollar amount that you need to trade with. I'm not here trying to swing for $100,000 a day anymore. Back then, I had $4 million in the fucking account. I was trying to grow my empire. So I, the days I was making $100,000 a day, I would have $4 million, $4 million cash in my account with margin. That's like $10, $16 million of buying power. I don't fucking need that, guys. I don't need that fucking much buying power. With $40,000, my buying power is like $100-something thousand dollars, right? Four to one. So I'm fine, $150,000 buying power. I'm fucking good at trading small cap. So start taking money out, putting it in the bank, because there may be situations where shit happens and you blow up your entire account. The stock halts. Stock halts. Does not trigger max day lock. Does not trigger hard stop. You fucking just blew up your entire fucking account. And you're like, what the fuck? There's shit that happens. But it happens. It's rare, but it happens. So take that money out. Create with only what you need. Because what happens is there may be situations where your entire account gets busted. And you don't want your entire life savings to be busted in there, guys. It could be a fucking error. It could be a hacker. You know, shit happens, man. I've seen halts happen. Fucking halts happen that you size too much. And you're thinking you're going to take a fucking 20 cent loss on the hard stock. Boom. $2 loss because of a halt and a gap down or a gap up. So, you know, so this is why Alex and I advocate what the money that we have in our account. <laughs> when people say blow up, it's not really blow up. Again, you know, I lost $35,000, but fuck, I make that shit back. No problem. I'm not going to it. But you see what I'm trying to tell you guys? So we have many different levels. So I'm, I am now trading with like 10 parachutes. I'm jumping from a fucking airplane with 10 parachutes. I'm trying, I'm thinking, I want to fucking another way. I want to have a fucking guy next to me, a tandem parachute trump jumper. And that's what we call a tab, a trading accountability buddy. When you're skydiving and you don't know what you're doing, they make you fly uh, skydive with an instructor until you're certified. That is your tab, guys. They don't jump out an airplane alone. You're jumping in tandem with another individual. Because shit happens, that guy can save your fucking life, guys, before it happens. So you're panicking, you jump out, and let's say fucking your parachute doesn't fucking open, and you're alone, and you're like, fuck, I'm going to cry, I'm going to die. Then the instructor reminds you, pull your second parachute. When you're down on the stock, you're freaking out. Your tab will tell you, get the fuck out. Cover this shit. Get the fuck out. That day that MRN happened, I got the fuck out. I am everybody's tab in the room. I posted my fucking chart. I said, I took the fucking loss before it balloons up. That is multiple levels of risk. Okay, guys? This is how you make money. You make money by not giving it back. You make money by not giving it back. You make money by not being greedy. You make money by fucking focusing on your process, not being greedy, not listening to the guys that have bad risk management, not <laughs> delete all those fuckers that fucking is, is causing you trouble. It causes me problems too when I see guys making giant ass PLs. Because I'm like, dude, I'm a better trader. <laughs> Why not? You get shit in your head like that, guys, it fucks your brain up. You start to force, right? So, you know, like, fuck, man, making million dollars a year is fucking not a bad thing. I don't need to be making five million, you know? You know, it'd be nice, but I've been there, done that, you know? So, th those are the type of mentality that, you know, you have to be careful about, guys. Let me bring Alex on now, guys. Let me bring Alex on now. Yep, summer trading guys. Uh, trade the range, size down. Yep. Hey, risk management. Hey, what's up? Hey, I like your haircut, man. You're looking good now. Yeah, finally, bro. I got a haircut <clears throat> a week ago. I was starting to look homeless, bro. People were throwing change on the street for me. So tell, tell everybody what you did this week. I, I love it because your mentality is totally different, dude. 
before before weekend you were all sad. Now you you you, know, you took some days off. You tell tell people what what you did because this is part of the process too. Yeah. So I mean, the big thing for me is like what people don't understand is how much work goes into running this huge huge community. I mean, everyone always sees the members. Everyone always sees the numbers, but they don't understand kind of the back end work that we do to make sure that these members are not only educated but they're staying profitable and they're watching all the videos. So oftentimes, you know, I get overwhelmed, you know, you get overwhelmed, everyone gets overwhelmed. So I kind of did like a nice staycation for myself uh, this weekend. I was just relaxing. And when I came back today, I felt great. And the number one thing that was really important to me that you touched on is I was actually talking to you about how well you've been doing. So if you guys don't know, Val's been training for almost two fucking decades. Guy's been around for the OTC days. He's been around for the early NASDAQ days. And now he's been around for the quote-unquote I, 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 I started training when uh, the market was still in fractions, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was the decimal line. That's how crazy it is. So People imagine, didn't realize it was in fractions. <laughs> so imagine when the market was still in fractions, this guy was trading, right? And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I want to learn from someone that's been there, that's done that. And the thing is, oftentimes in trading, you know, what worked six months ago is not going to work now. And... Yep, yep. I think it's number guy, so one. I'll give you a quick example. I'll give you an example. So the guy that was trading fractions, all he did was scalping the spread because a quarter is 20, 25 cents, one fourth. And so the, that is why they don't want to decimalize things they, because of the market makers. They're making so much money off the spread. So think about yep. this. Decimals, you can get down to one penny, right? Yeah. One penny. That is yep. one one hundredth in fractions. There's no one one hundredth in any stock in fractions. The lowest I saw was like, like 64. But it'd be like, yep. but, but that's rare, right? So you imagine each time the market maker is making 25 cents a clip. Holy shit. Yep. A lot. And now that strategy is obsolete, gone, right? You can, either, you can either cry about it and blame the market makers, or you could try to adapt. And I think the most important thing that you've been doing very well in this market is you have adapted. I see you going long on day one. I see you stopping your shorts after zombie time. I see you coming back at reversal time and that's the number one thing that I think is very important. You are not testing your luck and pushing your luck in this market. You know, yep, I'm because, because, you know, I, because I'm telling you, man, I, I, we all had a lot of success and we want to ride that success, but shit, we have to adapt, Alex. Otherwise, you're going to lose back yeah. all your money. And that's what we yeah. see right now, right? 300 guys are not adapting. They're losing all their money. Yep. I think the number one thing that's been helping me in this market, bro, we, we touch on it, but people don't really understand it is – to fucking manage your risk, bro, to use these hard stops to protect yourself. And I lost like 80 grand last week on MRIN because I had too much of an ego being on a winning streak that I got loose. So the first thing I did is I created a process after that loss. I dropped my max size and my max loss number to be able to regain my confidence. So rather than having a max loss number of let's say 80,000, you know, now my max loss is 10,000. Because 10,000 is a number that I can make with my eyes closed. And in trading, we need to make sure that our losses are capped so that we could live to trade another day. So if you guys are struggling in this market, I recommend going to your broker, setting up a max size, setting up a max loss, and giving yourself the seatbelt and the airbag and the parachute that you need to stay a trader long term. Because I've, dude, Val and I have seen traders for the past three years and before that for the past seven to 10 years trading and it always goes back to the same thing. There's one that catches most people off guard and then they go broke. But with a seatbelt, hey. you will never go broke. So let me ask you this. What's your biggest win ever? What's your biggest loss? My biggest win ever is $700,000 in one day, which was a few weeks ago on AMC, which was fucking insane. And I think my biggest loss this was before I was using like max loss and max size it was 200,000 on a stock that I was swing shorting overnight that gapped up on news, which was dries. And, and you stopped up. doing that. And you stopped doing that. I deleted that out of my process. <laughs> Don't no hold this shit overnight. So, so I, this is the biggest loss I've seen Alex lose was 80,000. So using the same process, his biggest loss was 80,000. His biggest win was 700,000. Do you see the ratio there, guys? Yep. Right? Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. And so, like no, for me, for me, same thing. My biggest win was one point four seven, or whatever the fuck it was. My biggest loss back then was three hundred, and I deleted that process 
The, yeah. the, I only lost one time at 300. That's because yeah. I held shit overnight. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Look at us, bro. The same fucking reason we both lost is we held shit overnight. Yep, because we can't control that. We cannot control that shit, so. Correct. So that's you know the thing, the thing is, after you lose, after you lose, you guys need to create a process. Find out what you did wrong. Were you trading too big? Were you trading too loose? Whatever that problem is that you guys had, the exact moment that you're done trading for the day, your next thing should be, what can I do to make sure this shit never happens again? And that's how we have the community. That's why we have a support system. You know, you can get on a call with a moderator. You can talk to us. And, you know, we're going to help you through lessons that me and Bao had so that you don't have to lose like us. Oh, man. we had, Talk about this guy. Man, the thing is, the process works. Once again, I could give you the strategy to make a million dollars. But unless you have the discipline to follow the strategy... Because, I mean, so I'll give you an example, man. If you go to a law school, if you go to medical school, you'll be sure to be a doctor and make a lot of money, right? But how many yeah. of us have the discipline to do that? Yeah. Okay, that takes 12 fucking years. Yeah. It's but true, bro. Tra training, you can do this in a matter of months. But people want to be instant overnight success. They can't even fucking do this shit for three months. I see guys, we talk about the guys that join for a month and expect to get rich. Yeah. That's the problem, man. I feel like everyone has such a... They're trying to do it quickly. And I don't know about you guys, but if it was easy, everyone would be fucking rich. I mean, even think about, like Bao said, sure, a doctor takes eight years, a lawyer takes five years. But even think about, like, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. Think about how many other movies he made before he became an Avenger. So yep. right now, you guys have to think, how long did it take him to become an overnight success? You know, people see me making 700000 They don't realize it's seven coming up on eight years. They see you making 1.4 million. They don't realize it's 20 years. But if you tell me that in a couple months, I can make six figures or even high five figures working one hour a day. I mean, I don't know why you guys don't commit to it for more than one month or one day or one fucking week. Yeah, because I, I think we, we see a lot of people join for a month and quit. And it's just very sad because, I mean, dude, some, maybe we get rid of the fucking monthly. Who knows what we're going to do in the future, right? Yeah. Shit, this monthly shit is like, I don't want people to lose. I know that it takes at least three months for you to fucking get started trading. Yeah, so, that's true. So these guys, are, the fact that, you know, there's a monthly membership, that the reason for a monthly, because not a lot of people have the money all at once. Yeah. But it's not because that you can learn in one month. Maybe that's what people yeah. are thinking, you know? Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the boot camp. What do I tease them about the boot camp? Oh, yeah. So let me, okay. So guys, what we're doing is in August, uh, August 17th is the, that week is what we're planning. We're finalizing all the details, but we're throwing our third annual boot camp. So what Wait, we're going to do? Fourth or third? Third. Fourth? Third. Did we do the first year? Uh, this is our fourth first year? year? First year we did in San Jose. Second. Oh, it might be our fucking fourth it's year. Fourth, bro. We Holy the fuck. We did all Holy the pandemic. Fuck. Oh, my God. Yeah, all right. So our fucking, jeez, bro, time is flying. Shit. Oh, dude, seriously, bro. I was That's in <laughs> San Jose. We did uh, Philadelphia. We did the virtual one, and now this is coming up again. More, yeah. Oh I think uh, I think the pandemic year, everybody forgot. <laughs> it kind of like yeah, <laughs> it's like no way year. Shit. So let me explain what we're gonna do, guys. So what we're gonna do is like we're gonna kind of bring back the curtains. We're gonna open up the doors, and we're basically gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys live how to build a watch list in the morning, and then between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to zombie times. Bao and I are going to be screen sharing and we are going to be trading live. We're going to be explaining our thought process live. Bao is going to show you how to set his fantasy orders live. And then what we're going to do is after that, from noon to market close, we're going to have all of our moderators make presentations for you guys. We're going to do a Q&A after the presentations and we're going to bring on our broker partner, Cobra, to do a presentation as well. So this is going to be a one day intensive boot camp educational session showing you live trading and showing you education, all this stuff. And the best part is for annuals and lifetimes, it is free, 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 free. This, this is going to be online, right? Because of the pandemic. It's going to be online. Next year on our fifth annual boot camp, it's going to be in person. But right now, there's still a lot of COVID fears. I know some people aren't vaccinated. I know some people are a little bit uncomfortable. So we're going to do virtual this year. But I promise next year is going to be in person. Hopefully, we can get a 1,000 of you guys there to be together. And hopefully, by the end of this week or next week, I'm going to release the schedule to see the presentations. And we'll take it from there, man. Hey, there's an in-person uh, uh, meetup right now in Orlando, right? Tell them about that one. Yeah, so uh, Claudio is hosting a meetup. I think it's on 
Let me the let seventh? me double. Yeah, it's either tip. I think it's on Saturday. Saturday. It's on Saturday. This Saturday. Saturday. Okay. okay, so it's probably this weekend. Um, yeah. I'll I'll tweet out those details right after this um, Instagram live, so you guys have all of it. But yeah, basically, that's right a, there, yeah, yeah, that's a free meet. All right, MIC meetup in Orlando, Florida, this Saturday, five p.m. at the Sky Bar, open to everyone. So you hey, don't have to be a member. Let me bring on. Let me bring on Claudio. All uh, right, Claudio. Hey, I'll see you. Alex. Hey, Claudio, you coming on to talk about the meetup? Going live with Claudio. I haven't talked to him in a while. Mr. Claudio. I have no makeup on. <laughs> Do you have clothes on? <laughs> That's all that matters. I, I can't hear you. Do you have, a, you have clothes on? <laughs> okay, good. Hey, what's up, my friend? How are you? I know. So, I, you said that you have no makeup on. I asked you if you have clothes on. I, I can barely know. hear you, Wow. Uh oh. Is it you or me? Your uh, is your internet? Yeah. No makeup. <laughs> but clothes on is good. Okay. I wanted you to talk about the meetup. Uh, what's going on with I, the meetup? Yeah. I can barely hear you. I don't know why. We can hear you. We can hear you. So just. So just talk. Let me. Okay, we're gonna call you left. I'm gonna bring him back on. He, for some reason, he, I think he's on his line. It looked very fuzzy from where he's at. Okay, here we go again. Hello. So I can barely hear you, but I, I, will, I will say the information anyway. Um, so Saturday, July 10th, the, the place open up at um, 5 p.m. is in the Sky Bar. I think that's it, in, in Marriott, in Orlando. It's open to everyone. Vamos a hablar español también, o sea, que va a haber gente que va a hablar español ahí, ahí también. Así que si hablas español y no hablas mucho inglés, you're welcome to come too. There are going to be a couple of mods, a couple of junior mods there, so don't miss it. There are people coming from everywhere. So it's, I think this is the, the first major meetup we're going to have after COVID, so we're going to enjoy ourselves. It's just to have a chat, a conversation, just to talk about trades. We will be expecting there. Awesome. Thank you, Claudio. This is so awesome, man. I wish I joined, but I am all the way in California. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. I can't hear you. See you, man. Thank you. Yeah, uh, everybody can hear Claudio fine, though, right? So, so you heard that he's uh, Claudio's one of the amazing moderators. He's he's kicking ass. So this is a great person. He does swing trades as well. Uh, this is a great chance for anybody who wants to do swing trading or just to meet up. He's a native Spanish speaking language. Um, this guy's amazing, man. He lives an incredible life. He has a book coming out. I, I don't know how to say that, but uh, but come on. So so uh, so this weekend Saturday. Uh, the meetup, and then tomorrow is Tosh's free webinar, guys. So I'll see you. Take care, guys. See you back in the room, guys.